Here's what happened. I started trading with real money before I knew how to trade. And then I traded impulsively because I was fearful I was going to miss the next trade that was the third one in the line of two previous winning ideas that I didn't execute on. And I made a stupid choice of listening to some fucking clown on another message board said, you don't want to trade with futures because the underlying risk is unlimited. But with options, you can only lose what you paid. Oh, what do you fucking do? Here you go. <laughs> Here's a perfect fucking poster child of a fucking loser trade right here. Boom. Everything wrong. Impulsiveness. Trying to get in. I have to prove that I'm trading with a live account. I got to get in there. I want to see results. And I did everything I shouldn't have done. I knew nothing about options. The fucking option was overpriced. The volatility built up into it. It was too much. The premiums were expensive. And the option writer made 50% overnight. And I lost half my money. And in that one transaction, it took me 20 minutes to immediately get on the fucking phone and say, listen, sell it at market. Send me the rest in a, in a check. One trade. And immediately I shut that bitch down. It scared the hell out of me. And I'm going to tell you something. For some of you students have been around for a while, you heard this fucking story more times than you want to hear it. But I'm going to tell you something else. There's people that need to fucking hear it. You've learned the lesson, but new people are coming to me all the time and they they see what I'm able to do. They see me executing. They see me calling the market live now and they're thinking I'm a fucking superhero. Like this guy can't do anything fucking wrong. 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 I am a human being. I am capable of doing it wrong. And when I first started, I was the perfect poster child of doing everything fucking wrong. And I'm telling you, it is so hard to overcome the damage that that shit did. Oh, it's only one transaction. No, 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 no. When you're obsessively compulsive like I am, like that's like my wife cheating on me. It's equivalent to that. It feels like, what the fuck? And you can't undo it. It's 30 fucking years ago. And I can remember what it felt like. I felt gutted. I'm like, there has to be something wrong with this fucking data. There's no way that's accurate. No, that's right. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? $750 back then, folks. Let me tell you something. I didn't even earn half that in a week. Yeah. It was bad. Like, that was like, what the hell? It took the wind out of my sails. Let me tell you something. It's stories like this where people that are traders today that have made money and they're consistently profitable and they're worth listening to. I love listening to that because that's what shapes who they are. It's the Mickey Mouse motherfuckers that are constantly talking about how they made money. Oh, look at the withdrawal this did. Here's the fucking trade I just did. Here's the 50R trade I did. When's the last time you fucking did something wrong? And what did you learn from it? That's what I'm interested in. Because anybody can get lucky. I got lucky. I got lucky for a while and made money. That doesn't mean you're skillful. But if you had an adverse experience in this industry, and you were able to overcome that, and turn it around and use it as a strength, I thought I, thought I forgot about what I was going with earlier, right? My weakness in the beginning was fear of getting in. My fear of trading predominantly was founded on fear of entering. I was afraid I was going to do that part wrong. So most of my work in my whole trading career was looking for an arsenal of ways to get in. Why did I need so many entry techniques? Because I was afraid of missing the move. I'm not missing shit. I got a fucking 12 gauge in my hand. Every time the market opens up, I got a dozen ways to get in that motherfucking move and not chase. That's what I show you all the time when I'm doing pyramid entries. 
I, I'm showing you that every one of these can be the individual model that you employ. And not one of them is superior than the other ones. Some of you think, oh, I want to learn how to do that pyramiding. When I want you to just focus on the fact that any one of those pyramid entries, and what I mean by that is when I put a trade on and I'm adding more to it, every single time I do that, that would be the very instance if I hadn't traded it or entered, entered it earlier at all, I would use that as my primary entry. If you can't justify your pyramid entry on the basis of that, you're get, you're gambling. You're guessing. Every one of your entries, when you're adding to a position, it should be able to stand on its own as that's the sole reason why you enter the trade. If you were never entered or built in a position prior to that entry. And when I learned how to pyramid, it was not taught to me that way. I was just taught as soon as you can afford to do so, buy it. That was Ken Roberts' approach. And I lost money trading Ken Roberts. I was never profitable doing anything with his bullshit. It was a stupid fucking in the, it was an introduction to trading. That's all it was. And it introduced me to failure, toxic thinking. It produced everything I'm trying to keep you from having. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be, if I could go back in time, I'm trying to be the very person I wish I would have met. Because I would have listened to everything I'm telling you to do and avoid doing. I would have done that. After seeing what I'm able to show you and call beforehand, execute, prove it. If I existed as a person outside of myself in 1992, I would have threw that fucking book in the fucking trash on November 5th and immediately just poured everything into what I'm trying to give to you. And I would have looked at no one else. I'm not trying to cultivate a hive mentality where you only listen to me. I'm just saying I know what I needed and I couldn't find it in anything else or anyone else back then. And the resources that you have available, like the fact that you're listening to me right now, you're all doing something right now. You're all, maybe you're driving, maybe you're working, maybe you're working out, maybe you're getting ready to fall asleep. Maybe some of you fell asleep already. And some, some of you are sitting there diligently with a notepad writing down things and Listening to this and thinking, wow, I never looked at it like that. Wow, I didn't think he had hardships before. I thought it's figured he knew everything and never had a problem. No. It was a lot of work. A lot of prayer got me here. But my fear of missing a move and fear of doing it wrong was my first barrier. And I plunged in with some stupid shit as my first transaction. Knowing not one thing about options. Nothing. I knew nothing about it. I learned a lot waking up the next day. Fuck options. <laughs> I ain't doing that. So my career began as pursuing precision entry techniques because my pursuit was I have to overcome my fear of picking the wrong entry point. And now I'm known all around the world for having all kinds of highly precise entry points and techniques to engage the marketplace. So I turned my weakness into my strength today. Think about that. That stuff comes from someone that went through the trenches. And I love listening to seasoned traders that share observations about their own development, the things that they endured, what they turned around on their own trading, uh, what, what benefited them, and how it was contrary to what they first got into the industry thinking this is what they should have focused on versus what they later found out was more appropriate, what should have been a, a majority of their time and concern early on. And I try to do that in my teachings and in my lectures with all of you. And I know sometimes it's dry. Okay. Sometimes it's really boring. And I think the reason why you guys like these Twitter spaces is because number one, you get to listen to Ratchet ICT, the unfiltered me, where you see and hear my chemical imbalances when they occur. In the YouTubes, I filter that out. And that's why it's boring. Like it's, it's like, I mean, I get it. It's, it's a boring 
librarian kind of guy talking to you. Here, you know, when you when you hear me get passionate about it, you're like, oh shit, you know, you, you perk your ears up. It breaks up the monotony of the learning, and also introduces reality. Like there's a real person that's talking to you. You know, I, I had real downside. I had real adversities. I had, I lost real money. I've blown several accounts early on, chasing things that I thought were the last bastion of technical analysis that, you know, I better jump on it right now or it's going to stop working. S stop thinking that way. The market's going to book the way the market's going to book. It matters not how many people are buying or selling it. It's going to do what it's going to do. And it's seeking liquidity and it's rebalancing in any inefficiency. If it's not doing that, it's going to consolidate. That's it. So when we sit down and we're looking at markets, the number one criteria is, should you be trading today? Is it likely to be ugly, consolidating and choppy? And I've done a lot of work to produce a list of days where I don't think it's good for me to do that. When's it likely to be choppy and, and consolidating and just do nothing where it could just chop you up and go you know, sideways? The day before a high impact news event like non-farm payroll, a rate announcement, CPI. Oh, but ICT, I made so much money on the day before. I don't give a fuck. I'm talking about me, my personal experience. I'm looking for a specific element in price that I like to operate in. You want to chase whatever you're chasing? You made money? Well done. Who am I to say that you didn't make money? I'm not showing up on your fucking channel. I'm not going in your comment section. Do you see me going around anybody else's channel saying, dude, you're a fucking, you're, you're a clown. You're not trading my stuff, so therefore you're an idiot. But you have people on the outside coming to my audience. I'm not in your audience. You're in my audience. And you're saying that this doesn't work, that doesn't work, and there's no proof. And everybody's making money and fucking bringing their receipts and being interviewed by these companies. It's not me doing that. They're not photoshopping. They're not photoshopping you know, uh, funded account certificates. The fucking companies themselves are interviewing them. You see their names on the leaderboards up there. They're getting paid. Okay? <laughs> so what the fuck? I think that more is made about image in this industry than practicality. And I have tried to be as practical as humanly possible and still keep people awake. Because you know, there's a lot of dryness to this. And in the beginning, I, it was all dry when I first started. It was all books. It was all dry. There was no videos unless you purchased them. And you didn't have the access to people that, number one, if they were profitable, they ain't telling you shit. They're not telling you shit. They're not teaching you nothing. They're not teaching you their best stuff. Fuck that shit. They, they finally found it, right? And that's understandable. But the way they marketed everything back in the 90s and the 80s and such, you know, they made it seem like you know, they, they themselves are you know, the only thing ever, which is what everybody else says they think I'm doing. I'm not saying I'm the only one that can be profitable, that, that my students are the only ones that are profitable. I'm the only one that gets the heart of why price books. But you can be profitable with flipping a quarter. I'm not arguing that. I just wrestle with these opinions that are strong armed against me and my community where they say, oh, there is no word that's not going to be mentioned. And we're not going to have, you know, consistency and precision when we can. Like these people out there in this industry are like at some point. It, it, it's. It makes you wonder, like, are, are they really this opinionated or are they being encouraged to just put in, put out there misinformation? Because anybody that sits on the fence and just takes somebody else's opinion, whether it be about me and what I teach and my students or anything, and they let anybody else frame their opinion for them or provide their mindset about a thing, whether it be trading or anything. To me, is is unfortunate because it, and it's, it provides you know the clearest indication that you're not really equipped to be a trader. 
Because really what you're doing is, is you're looking for somebody else to give you your thought process. And how anybody would do that and be able to live with themselves is beyond me. Like I, I'm, I am a result of hard work, yes, but I'm also a result of a lot of prayer and belief and blessing. All the work in the world didn't get me here. All the effort in the world didn't get me here. Believing in other people's thoughts and the internalization of price and how the market's book did not get me here. Being contrarian to everything out there did. I opened this discussion up today with everybody in this retail part of the world. Okay, in trading, they all learn the same stuff. Diagonal trend line support and resistance, moving average crossovers, oscillators, patterns for pattern's sake, and 2% risk. Where's all the yachts? Where's all the mansions? Where's all the evidence that they can do it precisely beforehand? It's incredible how that doesn't exist but they write books they make courses and they sell themselves on social media as the ones that are capable of doing that i come to you with a demo i stand out here in front of the entire world some ridicule me some people don't give a shit as the right mindset i prove to you where price is going to go conceptually with a theory that repeats on a narrative that is understood, I'm highly focused. It's transferable knowledge. It has nothing to do with image. I don't present my image in my personal life. I've done it one time to answer bullshitters. And the promise that that bullshitter made didn't get answered the way they said. If you prove that you have these cars, I did. And it's just, it's never going to be enough. So what I live in what I drive, how I spend my money, what I wear, how I cut my hair, is irrelevant. Are you going to be able to make your rent payment this November? Pay your utility bill by knowing how many Corvettes I own, how big my square footage of my house is, how many garages do I have, what do I feed my dogs, what's my favorite shoe? <laughs> I like when you guys ask me what fragrance I wear because I'm a frag head, but I don't think that uh, all the things that people say about me or concern themselves about with me is even worth mentioning. I'm just a guy that I want to help you. And if you test the things I'm telling you to test, the evidence will be there for you to decide whether or not you want to pursue it. It costs you nothing. You'll know. Spend a month. One month, you'll know right away if it's full of shit or not. If there's some logic to it, you'll see it right away. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. No one can tell you you didn't see what you watched me do publicly now. But years later from now, there will be people that creep up and try to discredit everything that you witnessed. It's, we did, we've been seeing it for a year and a half. It's been like that. It was the same way when I was on America Online. The same thing still goes on today they will lie and say you didn't see what you fucking saw you didn't understand what was about to happen in the marketplace when it was explained to you beforehand who's really nuts here <laughs>